I'd like to show you a map. This is a map that was just made in fun. It was a, a sort of a, a, a game. Some of my Texan friends uh, may enjoy it. It's a Texan view of the United States in which the Texas looms large and wonderful and enormous. Now, this is made in fun. Uh, it's a, a jest, whether it's a jest has any significance or not is unimportant. But the map allows me to make a point on this word things business that I should like to pursue. Note what the map did. It exaggerated tremendously. We find it very helpful to think of words and talking as a kind of continuous map making. Thus, just as a map can fit the territory, what I say about anything can fit it. If, for example, I say that this is not cylindrical, it's uh, five-dimensional or something of the sort, my map may not fit. Or if I say that there are three of these, my language does not fit. Now, one of the very interesting effects, we think, that comes from our failure sharply to realize when we're in the realm of the verbal and when we're in the realm of the nonverbal is the deeply ingrained, exaggerating tendency that occurs in our speech. And I should like to try to provide one or two illustrations of how easy it is for us to exaggerate in our talking, just as it's easy for a map maker to distort a map. Indeed, to make an accurate map is a very great achievement. It takes countless observations and a great deal of very technical work to make a map fit the territory. I now want to suggest that in our everyday talking, we are more likely to distort and exaggerate than we think. And secondly, that it will take an active effort to be accurate and precise and to avoid the exaggeration. 